All right, guys, today we're going to install a Wixie Digital readout. This is the one with the remote readout. We're going to put that onto a Jet 20 inch planer today. Stick around, we'll show you how. So today this digital readout is going to go on to our big jet 20 inch planer. This is the 208HH. It's the helical head model. Not that it matters much for doing a digital readout install. It's all basically the same. The product we're going to install is a Wixie WR550 and that's their digital readout for large planers and other large stationary devices. It's particularly handy because it has a remote readout. Installation on this is super simple and of course things would be very similar for the big Powermatic planers but if you have a different brand you may have to do a little bit of a modification to the install process but the brackets that come with the Wixie products are really good because they do allow for some flexibility on install. Okay so the first thing we need to do is find a suitable location to mount the scale and on this jet 20 inch planer there's unused holes on the outfeed table. So here's the dust collection chute here, just to orient you. And on the outfeed side, there's another model of this. The standard knife model has brackets that attach here for your outfeed table. And since this model uses cast iron outfeed, uh, these holes are unused. So we're gonna choose this as our upper mounting hole location for the scale. And for that, you'll just need a bolt that's not supplied with the kit. Uh, this looks to be an eight millimeter bolt and you just need a short length, say maybe half inch. And we'll go ahead and what we've done here is just enlarge this bottom hole in the bracket a little bit. And that'll allow a real easy spot just to mount that scale. And we'll just attach that loosely for now. On your machine, you'll want to choose a mounting location that steers clear of any of the knobs like these carriage locks on this planer. But you'll also want to be able to loosen up this knob so that you can raise the scale up for doing your calibrations. And now we need to pick a spot for the magnet connector. It can attach to these tabs here. We've got four choices. And I think what will work best for us is to come right down to this location and we'll just make use of this large factory bolt that attaches the cast iron sub base to the base of this machine. And to make that work, I think I'll just get the bolt cutters out and just snip this slot into kind of a U shape for this large bolt. Just fair warning, this does not appear to be a captive nut in this base on the jet. So just loosen it enough to slip in your hardware and retighten up the bolt. And then just reattach the magnet assembly to the bracket the way it came. Another thing to notice as you run the table down with the height adjustment crank, just double check that your scale clears this bracket. If it does, you're good to go. You can go ahead and snug up the bolts and nuts and we'll move on to mounting the display. Well, what you'll probably spend the most time obsessing about is where to mount the digital readout. And I think on this machine, there's probably a number of good spots that would work. For me, it's gonna be located right in this spot just low enough that it's not apt to get hit by lumber as you feed it through the machine. It's kind of tucked in this nice little spot between the top rollers and the hand wheel. To make that happen, just remove the pair of screws that secure this factory scale on the front of the machine. I fabricated this simple mounting strip. It's just eighth inch aluminum, about an inch wide. Two holes at the top for the readout, two holes at the bottom. We'll reuse that same factory mounting location and we'll even be able to maintain the factory scale. These top holes just let us screw the readout directly to the piece of aluminum. And we'll do that with these short length, low profile, 832nd bolts. Dab a thread locker, probably not a bad idea here. And we'll secure those nuts. So fully mounted, it looks like that. The gauge will bend down this orientation so you'll be able to see it from any viewing angle. Finally, we'll reinstall the factory scale using the same bolts. The scale will go on the back of our fabricated bracket and install just the same way. Next, we'll install the network cable and run that from the readout down below the table to the sensor. So I pulled one of those screws out just to use it again for a little heavy duty wire clip 
rubber coated, that'll do a nice job, give some strain relief up to the readout. The other end of the cable just plugs into the sensor. So the self-adhesive wire hooks actually didn't work for me. I wasn't getting quite enough grab, so I'm actually going to use these. They're magnetic wire clips from Rockler. They're pretty handy. I've used them on my bandsaw for a while now. If you've got lights up overhead with extra wires, it's a great way to manage that. So I'll just uh, use wire ties and clip this wire into a circle. Use a couple of these magnetic clips and that'll secure it up under the table. Of course, you'll make sure you're just in the center bay of that, away from the bottom side of the moving rollers. And you'll run your table up and down. Make sure you have enough slack for normal operations. Two AAA batteries will bring the unit to life. And we'll replace the cover. That is a nice bright readout. It's really responsive too. And then to calibrate the gauge, you want to send a board through the planer, make sure it's flat on the bottom, and that you get a full cut off the top. Now cut a piece of that board as described in the manual, but basically you just want to cut the ends off so you're not dealing with any snipe. And then just take a little sample of that and we'll use that to calibrate the gauge. Back at the outfeed table, we'll go ahead and loosen this knob. Raise the assembly up and put in your sample block. Let that drop back down. Just make sure everything's pinched together by spring pressure. Press and hold the calibration button for a few seconds. Once the ab starts flashing for absolute, just hit once again to set it. Remove the scrap of wood. Let that drop all the way down. Retighten that knob. Now your gauge should be reading the actual thickness of that scrap material and we'll confirm that with a digital caliper. And we'll see how we did. 0.635, I mean, you almost can't believe it. Looks good. And of course, we'll run it through another pass just for the non-believers. Okay, we got 0.615 on the readout. Let's see what the board measures. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, 0.615. Let's zero it out again just to test. 614. I mean, 615. It's, it's within a thousandth. I mean, I don't know that you'd always expect that accurate, but hey, can't do any better than that. All right, guys, if you're interested in adding a digital readout to your stationary planer, this is one good way to do that. And remember, we didn't have to modify the machine in any way. The only light fabrication we did was to that little aluminum piece of flat bar. Pretty easy to do. And as far as calibration, don't sweat that at all. Push a button two times and you're calibrated. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.